organic social media? Is it a marketing channel or not? We've set the stage. We've told our audience, you know, what it was like when we were young. We've talked about what a channel really is, why different people refer to a channel. So the question was specifically around organic social media, not paid. Because usually when I bring up, you know, measuring social media, people always go to the paid side. And that's what makes discussion so interesting. Is organic social media, based on all the conversations we've now had, based on your rural experience, Troy, is it a channel based on how we've defined a channel? Yes or no? And defend your answer. Well, your honor, I declare and decree that organic is, in fact, a channel. Are you for or against organic social media be considered a legitimate marketing channel? A full debate is happening live. April 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. And yours truly is captain of the team arguing for it. If you're an avid listener of I Digress, my request is that you click on the link in the show notes. You have to click on the link in the show notes for it to count and register through my link in my show notes to support me. See the debate live and see for yourself which team will win the battle of is organic social media a legitimate marketing channel? I will also decree that it is a channel that is probably one of the most effective ways to quantify your campaigns and storylines and branding and messaging at a very high level effort pretty quickly and substantially. Well, Troy, where, do I, where in the world did I pull that from? Unlike any other channel, when you think of TV or you think of print, there's a certain length of time to determine success or even readability viewership or anything of the, the sub things before you go into the heavy KPIs. For social, you're going to get immediate reaction or no reaction, still reaction of, did that land? Did that make sense? Do I like it? Do I not like it? Was it painful to produce? Did it not even make sense from our flow chart all the way to the production line to push out on social? You're going to know immediately if it's a win or a fail. Twitter will not lie to you. They're going to tell you what's up. We all know. We all have been there. And I'm not even talking about the virality. People always think about, well, if a post go viral, then I can quantify it. I want to shut that down. Because in most cases, virality is just a lot of people seeing something, but they're not the chosen few who actually would do something. Let that stand and let that marinate for a minute. But my point I really want to think about with social media as a channel is that you have the opportunity to get immediate, almost instant gratification or lack thereof to validate or disprove your thesis or hypothesis on a marketing, on a storyline or a brand, on a product, on a subset of business that you're pushing out into the world from a go-to market strategy even. Just by that alone, which can actually help you into updating and quantifying your other marketing channels. And with that, your honor, I rest my case. Can I be vulnerable with you for a moment? The honest truth is that vulnerability is actually a defining trait of entrepreneurs. Vulnerability is the foundation of creativity, of innovation, and change. And entrepreneurship embodies all of these. To be truly great, entrepreneurs need to be a little out there. After all, fearless creativity, maverick thinking, and risk-taking seldomly show up in the middle of the bell curve. As entrepreneurs, we see our fair share of aspiring and veteran entrepreneurs that inspire us to brilliantly continue onward. And that's where the Finding Founders podcast comes into play. Finding Founders Podcast, hosted by Sam Donner, is brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Designed to inspire, Finding Founders is a podcast about vulnerability and entrepreneurship, where you learn from the life stories of founders and highlights the moments where they were most vulnerable. Inspiration doesn't come from lauding success after success, but rather inspiration is born from identifying with hardship. 
From that low point, they climb the ladder of success and reveal how and why they ultimately pursued entrepreneurship and the success, the stories, and the life lessons they took away from their experiences. You can listen to Finding Founders wherever you get your podcasts. I had a developer of a piece of software want to talk to me and talk about their business plan and what they were doing for a product they want to bring to market. And I said, if you're not measuring it, it, it's irrelevant. And they said, you cannot measure organic social media. It cannot be done. And they were adamant. It was a very strong disagreement between myself and this other individual. And I said, fair enough, you know, you take what you want. And it's funny because we had this conversation internally. We were comparing notes about what do we hear from people who tell us that it cannot be measured or should not be measured. And we captured a few here. Social media shouldn't be a place to sell. It should be a place to build relationships. That's one example. Social media is a place to begin conversations for networking, research, and engaging audience, not for pitching the prospects. Most of the time, social media goals are focused on building awareness, engaging with the customer, driving them to the website. That's not something I can easily measure. So these are some of the complaints I got. Some of the reasons why people do not believe it can be measured. So when you hear those excuses, and there are many, there, or, or the one I already mentioned, well, we already do measure it. It's with engagement, likes, follow, shares. I call those vanity metrics, personally, because while they're interesting, don't get me wrong, they don't result in dollars and cents. My CFO doesn't care about vanity metrics. My CFO cares about the P&L. They care about the bottom line impact. If you're an agency, your clients likely, they want the vanity metrics, but they really want the ROI. What's up, digital world? You're listening to the I Digress Audio Experience with Troy Sandy. Social media, marketing, storytelling, business, culture, and more. Coming to you in three, two, one. Are those excuses you have heard before? Are those excuses you have used before? You're in the confessional saying, been there, done it? I don't mind speaking for many who lean with that verbatim, have spoke on stages, have posted on social, have done long Twitter threads and LinkedIn posts and everything, pushing that narrative. And the reason I have been converted is because when you get to levels of leadership or management where you're solely responsible for driving actual growth and revenue to maintain your job or someone else's job or a team or a whole organization, you are forced to look at a lens that isn't, dare I say it, in a certain playground way, but a real life way. And I think we do have a subset of educational barriers that need to be rectified and optimized for everyone to see the full picture. Most of us are in the matrix right now, only quantifying in those realms. But in the real world, we have to justify this to keep jobs, to move things, to push investments. And the better we can kind of give that dynamic, the better we can almost perform at our jobs. And the last thing I'd say about a KPI specifically, many of these KPIs are like vitamins. Vitamins are good to take. Are you taking the right combination of vitamins that's meant to help you to your specific ailment or increase your specific strength? Vitamin E, what does it do? Vitamin K, what does it do? Vitamin A, vitamin C. Everyone thinks vitamin C works for everything and it may not work for what you need. And so it's not just enough to say we're just taking vitamins. Just that stuff that's just saying we're doing exercising. Many times we list those things as part of a process, but they're not solutions. Oh, I'm getting more engagement. That's part of a process, but they may not be a solution. They may not be something that's actually driving. That's just another variable that if you stack together in the right matrix of ways, now we see the bigger puzzle piece picture of, wow, look what we're doing. But we're missing some puzzle pieces, y'all. And I don't want it to make it seem like engagement versus money is, is an issue, but we got to make the puzzle pieces meet. They got to match. We got to have the bigger picture. And the only way we can solve that in this, or even going beyond the conversation for further conversations down the road, everyone needs to be alignment of what their expectations are per what they can measure per their educational knowledge, not from everyone else customized for our own brand, our own agency to move that channel forward. So folks, as you listen to these answers, you may have picked up that I'm trying to intentionally pull out of Troy and you've heard of them say a lot of this is fear because I don't understand it. 
And you've heard me give you examples of how top down that, you know, as Troy said, the real world, how I need to look at it versus how you're looking at it. I'm the guy with the budget and the staff, and you're the one who actually is doing it on day to day, not me. All of this is to set the stage so that you understand that if you have one point of view that is not consistent with what you're hearing here, or you're scared, or you're apprehensive, or you're thinking you're lacking the knowledge, we're here for you. It's okay. What you're going through now is absolutely normal. So with that, let's shift a little bit. We've set the stage. We all agree it's a channel. We know what a channel is. Knowing that it's a channel, that you're going to want to measure it. You want to get those KPIs. You want to have the right vitamins. Love the vitamin example. Nobody's ever used the vitamin example here. This is great. Vitamin D for dollars if you're in North America. Troy, the question I have for you is, how does treating organic social like a channel impact your strategy? How does that impact your operations? Can you give us any examples of what you've done to adapt because of this? I'm a very neurodivergent visual learner. So for those who know me and in previous times when I've talked with Agorapos, I speak in all of analogies, not that it helps me understand, but I'm sure it helps other people at a simple level, considering everyone who's listening understand. Well, I like to think of it as like when you go to the gym, you can't just tell someone to just do five reps of this, 10 reps of this, 25 reps of this and expect the outcome to be the same. Why? Because you first of all analyze your BMI, you have to analyze the body first. And I think when you're looking at this as a social media channel, it forces you to look not at social media as just a broadcasting or distribution, but as a revenue stream source that ties into the bigger picture of your organization and to understand the flow and how to see is going to push and how to amplify it is to understand the, the body as a whole. And so now this is going to force you to look at your organization through the social media lens to build first the strategy to then execute, to drive through the channel, to give you your KPIs that are quantifying and telling you you're in the right direction, you're getting your right P's versus an L's, and it's going to work. And so I think it forces social media to be less of just, here's what you need to do, push on distribution. Social media now is part of the conversation at the highest level. I think full transparency is necessary. Where are we at for going into quarter two? Where are we projecting like for quarter four? And where does social media as a channel fit into that conversation? Not we're all making the decisions at the top. It goes down, goes down, goes down. Social media is an afterthought. Hey, post some content, what I just wrote about and call it a day, right? Let's just call, let's just be yeah. real. We got to this far in the conversation. Let's just take the gloves off and just call it what it is, what we experience on the day-to-day -day from social media managers and creators, which is all ambiguities of what they're doing and how much they're doing the position just, you know, rolls in one, but I digress. And then high level, they don't have the connection. And so we're treating this as a channel that makes you money. Everyone's going to want to be in the conversation and have real alignment that's going to force real change that's going to make real impact. Are you sick and tired of wasting your precious time on tedious tasks like pulling reports, like rewriting blog posts, and trying to personalize countless prospecting emails? Well, say no more, because I've got some news for you. There are some new AI tools that are going to blow your mind. Introducing HubSpot's newest AI tools, Content Assistant and ChatSpot. Content Assistant uses the power of OpenAI's GPT-3 model to help you create content outlines, outreach emails, and even web page copy in just seconds. And in case that wasn't enough, they created ChatSpot, a conversational growth assistant that connects to your HubSpot CRM for unbeatable support. Content is key to driving visitors, leads, and revenue. Let's be honest, creating great content takes a lot of time and people. HubSpot's AI-powered content assistant helps marketers brainstorm, create, and share content in a flash without ever having to leave HubSpot. It can come up with blog ideas, draft blog outlines. It could even write copy on any topic from marketing trends to your company's return policy and even develop copy landing pages, prospecting emails, and more. Need a contact on the fly? Need help pulling a quick report and data points? Need help with ideas for drafting the best prospecting email? 
ChatSpot has got your back. ChatSpot is a conversational bot and it helps bot CRM wins. It can help you draft follow-up emails to prospects, add contacts and notes directly to your CRM, find prospects in your CRM that meets your criteria, run reports to get data on things like web traffic and revenue, and even ask for status updates, and much, much more. The easy to use CRM just got even easier. Head to HubSpot.com forward slash artificial dash intelligence to get early access today. So let's recap what I just heard Troy said. Social media is a channel. It could be paid, you know, social. It could be paid ads. It could be events. All these different channels. Because at the end of the day, why do we do what we do? We do what we do because the company, whether it's our own company or a company we work for, no matter what, there's always a stated goal. We want to grow revenues 20% this year. Pick, pick that goal, right? Any goal. There's a stated goal. We use multiple channels as tactics to achieve that outcome. I view it as a chessboard. If you're a chess player at all, you got the king, you got the queen, you got the bishop, you got the knight, you got the rook, you got the pawns. They have different moves. But when used, you know, individually, they're great. But when used together as a team, boom, you can win or you can lose if you do it wrong. That sucks. But my point is you use different channels, so you use different pieces on the chessboard. And then you got to measure it so you can adapt and evolve your strategies. And then what was really important was you also need to talk about it with all the other stakeholders. I don't know if you caught that. You need to talk about it with all the other stakeholders so they're educated, which is where I want to go next. The whole idea of educating my stakeholders. One of the things I hear a lot, whether it's an agency or an internal marketing team, is you're going to hear people say, I want engagement. I want to feed my ego. Or they'll say the opposite. You're busy on social because you like it. You're just socializing with your friends or you're vain or are you really like doing video or what it might be. In other words, it's all about feeding their ego or projecting upon you why you do. How do we educate these stakeholders that nay, nay, this is not a vanity play. This is not an ego play. This is an intentional play in combination with other channels to actually achieve outcome. How do I educate my stakeholders? People know I'm really big on acronyms. That, that was not my intentions. I'm making one on the spot because that was my challenge by a one or more post user today. And so the acronym I came together is ADD. Audience dictates direction, period. So when you look at this, the way to win your investors, your stakeholders, everyone in between is to say, we are doing video. We are using this platform. We are using this XYZ because our audience demands it. Our audience wants it. Our audience needs it. Our audience reacts to it. Our audience consumes it. When we lead with the audience first, which are literally the people who are keeping us in business, no one, no one at a certain point is going to question the direction and give you the go ahead to prove and move ahead. The problem is the people who are, who are on the front lines, the social media managing team and the, the, their counterparts sometimes don't get the audience with the people at the top of the chain with full control and direction. They don't see what they see. And so they're moving in a way based off lack of education. And also there's a lack of communication. There's a lack of structure and a lack of purpose. And so when we lead with the audience first and make that our North Star, because at the end of the day, we all want to make more profit year on and year out, we can then break that down to move that forward. And so I would say when you do it that way, that is your best way, that is your safest way, no matter if any channel disappears overnight, goes down, new ones come up, that is your probably most sustainable proof way to stay in business using social media channels. I love it. And we've got many bullets. The first one being, you just want to introduce the idea of organic social media as a marketing channel, using those numbers, using the statistics, and using those use cases from your industry, exactly as Milu said, from competition, see how they're doing it. But you want the executives to understand that this is a very intentional channel. And you can use that word channel like you would trade shows or events I'm sorry, uh, or pay-per-click, because they know those channels. They're familiar with those channels, very much so. Organic's a little more hard 
to get your head around, especially if you don't live in it every single day. And the last way he can do it is by showing them numbers. It sounds stupid, but there's a lot of people, you know, we have the creative types, which marketers tend to be, and then we have the, you know, show me the number types, right? And whether it be CFOs, salespeople, the exact same way, show them the numbers of the impact you're having because you're measuring it. And they're going to go, oh, oh, I see it now. Okay. I don't understand it. I can't do it, but that's why I hired you. Make it happen. So that's cool. All right. So with that said, we're going to stop it there. We began the whole conversation, which is a cursory conversation, organic social media. Is it a marketing channel or not? And I think the consensus here is that it is, which is going to rock the world of many people listening to this. Hopefully you understood why it's a channel. Hopefully you understood you're not alone in not feeling comfortable about treating it as a channel and that it's going to mean change and education and more learning for you. Hopefully you understand there's additional stakeholders involved, not just you. And that's why you got to do it, especially if you want to advance your career or you want more money or you want more staff or you want more spotlight on you. The biggest way to get spotlight on you is to show the world how you're driving that revenue. And it's all about measuring. What's up, I digress listeners. Are you enjoying this episode? I didn't want to end this without you hearing my voice. I have a gift. I have a test. And I have a request. Let's start with my request. I am a part of this great debate with the Gora Pulse. Is social media a marketing channel? Or is it just a way to show your audience that the lights are still on? Well, you're in luck. A full debate is happening live. April 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Well, two teams will face off arguing for organic being a legitimate marketing channel and arguing against organic social media being a legitimate marketing channel. And yours truly is captain of the team arguing for it. So my request is that you click on the link in the show notes. You have to click on the link in the show notes for it to count because it's a competition and register through my link in my show notes to support me. My test is simply this. Are you for or against organic social media marketing as a legitimate marketing channel? After you register, you can leave a comment live or engage in the replay or tag myself and Agora Pulse on Twitter or other social media channels and let me know what you think. This is a test to see how many of my listeners actually care, but also a test to see where do my listeners stand in this great debate. And my gift is a link to this actual interview where you can see me and Daryl Prale, the CMO at Agora Pulse, interact on is organic social media marketing a marketing channel and where it goes from there. All the links and more will be in the show notes again. If you click on the link in the show notes, that's the only way it's going to count for me to prove organic social media marketing matters and that my listeners, my amazing listeners are supporting me, hopefully, in my stance. See the debate live and see for yourself which team will win the battle of is organic social media a legitimate marketing channel? And that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Digress. What was your takeaway? Care to share your thoughts and tag Troy on social media? You can find him on all platforms at Find Troy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review or comment for this episode from wherever you're listening. Looking for a marketing strategist to build the structure, strategies, and systems you need to get the success you want and the ROI you desire in your business? Book a discovery call to talk with Troy at findtroy.com. And as Troy's philosophy goes, imagination is the engine, content is the fuel, social media is the highway, marketing is the roadmap, sales is the destination, culture is the GPS. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 